Hey, hello, how you doing? My name is Seja Avani, if you don't know, and today is another extra special video. Today, I will be bedazzling my first ever corset, <laughs> like ever, 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 for a project that I'll be doing for a photo shoot. It was actually technically supposed to be for a birthday photo shoot last year, but you know, y'all know me and my timing. It, it, it'd be a little rough okay so i'm finally getting it done and i'll be filming the bedazzling and rhinestoning of it so if you'd like to just chill out grab a snack grab a drink do whatever you need to do and just watch me rhinestone this corset in a very relaxing way <laughs> very chill i might talk about a few things we'll see how it goes I'm still figuring out this video, but it's going to be a really, really fun, relaxing video. So if you would like to know how I rhinestoned the corset that you saw in the thumbnail, please keep on watching until the end of this video. Okay, so this is the corset, my first ever corset I have ever sewn in my entire life after years of watching videos and fantasizing about making my own. It is finally existing. So I used the Arania Black pattern in Nora is the underbus corset pattern that's easy for beginners and I say that this one came out pretty well there's lots of improvements like as you see the lacing gap isn't perfect <laughs> that's more of me sewing the corset I think more so than the fit of it because I did sew another one that you'll be seeing soon and um the lacing gap looks way better but yeah it looks great i mean i'm happy with it i'm proud of it but there's still a lot of improvements so what we're going to do for my very first corset is that i'm going to rhinestone the crap out of it <laughs> i just wanted y'all to see the glory of this corset like it is so freaking pretty and surprisingly really comfortable which is good too so anyway let's get on to it so I found this butterfly little clip art thing on the internet and that's what I'll be using as my template. I'll be using the same technique as I did with the Bratz tracksuit. It's just to cut it out using an X-Acto knife. I also cut the template in half as well so that I have two halves that I can use in order to have a symmetrical corset. So these are the rhinestones I'll be using. I will, I'll, ew. So I will be using um, the rhinestone from my own company, Tejas Wonderland, Risen Rhinestone in Aaliyah, which is a light pink color, which will be the inner kind of filler color. And then the outline color, um, I'll be using a mix of my hot pink color and another company's hot pink color. So I'll be using my um, hot pink color in Eris, which is in three millimeters. And then another company, the Deco Crafts. Um, multiple sizes in hot pink as well and the light pink was also in um, three millimeter but I also ended up getting two millimeters as well so that's what we're starting out with in order to fill out this butterfly corset but we'll be using more crystals later so anyway let's get to actually doing this damn thing so uh, this is the corset all laid out and so what I'm going to do I'm right now figuring out what to do and how to rhinestone it because it's such a curvy garment. But what I decided to do is take out the lacing from the back and lay it as flat as possible on the table. So after that, obviously I cut my whole stencil out and now I'm just figuring out the placement of it and what looks best on the corset. I was very scared for this part, but luckily I think the placement that I ended up having was perfect, um, but it was a little bit scary because you just don't want to mess it up. So now what I'm doing is peeling off the back of the stencil because the stencil is sticky. I make my stencils out of like the shipping label paper. Um, but if you have a cry cut, I'm jealous or a cricket or whatever. <laughs> I'm jealous. So I'm just placing the um, stencil down, easy peasy, and just taking my time for each section because you don't want any wrinkles, um, you know, or any bubbles or anything like that. Uh, you want the stencil to lay as accurately as possible onto this garment. So I took my time because, again, this is a very curvy you know shapely garment so I just really wanted to make sure that everything laid properly so um, I really took my time doing this okay so uh, I'm gonna go get my shit and we're gonna get papa lopping so then once I laid my garment I mean not my garment my stencil down I am ready to go with the rhinestoning. So I'm first going to outline the butterfly with the hot pink rhinestones, i.e. 
my Eris um, three millimeter rhinestones and the Deco Crafts hot pink rhinestones. And I just take my time just doing the little outline. I take my glue or a dotting, like a small dotter tool and just, you know, draw lines of glue and then place the rhinestones right on top of it. There's really not much to it. Um, and I place every single rhinestone until the whole butterfly is outlined pretty much. So you will be watching me do that <laughs> for a hot minute as you see how long this video is. So as that's going on, I'm going to talk about the different shows I was watching during making this corset or rhinestoning this corset and also just what I've been watching recently. And you might hear some of my outcries and shenanigans as well <laughs> of one of the shows that we're starting off with, which is The 100. Yes, you heard me right. I decided to watch it. If you don't know, The 100 is a sci-fi dystopian show uh, <laughs> that was on CW for eight seasons. Yeah, that surprises me as well. It was on the CW for eight seasons. I think this last season was 2020. So what had happened, the premise is, is that like, okay, the earth, toxic, like nuclear warfare destroyed the planet. So like a whole bunch of people like went up into the space station to live for like a hundred and something years. Right. And then finally, they're like trying to figure out if the earth is safe enough to, you know, cohabitate in again. So what they decided to do, and also the space station don't have enough supplies in order to, su to like support all the people that live in the space station. So what the American space station decided to do was to take <laughs> 100 juvenile like offenders, pretty much like, you know, teenage criminals and send them down to earth to see if the earth was, you know, can be safe to live in. Seriously, that, that's wild to me. First of all, <laughs> I this show, I'm gonna let you know right now, very so so about it. it. It's a mess. The show is a mess. So first of all, just with the premise alone, why? Like why the teenagers when you have adults that like have done worse shit, <laughs> like you could like totally like send them down. Like why the teenagers? Like how does that make any sense to me? And I don't think they explained it in the show. Like make it make sense to me. So that's already messed up, number one. And then my biggest gripe with the story, like a whole bunch of shit happens. So if you like action and drama, like this has it. But if you like like bc level like shows and movies then you'll like definitely like this especially sci-fi but like literally it's like so dumb like the first like eight episodes are dumb like these teenagers literally don't have any sense of responsibility in their body except for the main character whose name is clark she's the daughter of the doctor of the space station and like her dad got murdered because he spilt the beans about not having enough, I believe, like oxygen on the space station. So it was like a whole big thing. So she's like has a vendetta against that. <laughs> and then she got locked up for something as well. I forgot. I think she helped her dad spill the beans or something happened. I don't know. But she was one of the 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 offenders, the crime, you know, criminal teenagers that was ending up being sent down. But, like, literally, Clark is the only one who gives a crap about, like, how to survive on this new planet or new-to-them planet. And, like, it literally makes no sense because everybody else wants to, like, jack off and not do anything, not do work, act like it's a freaking vacation, like, it's hot girl summer vacation on this, like, toxic unknown planet to them. And, like, it's so, it's, like, idiotically annoying. So, there's this one dude that's, like, the co-star, Bellamy, He's, like, hungry for power, and I think he, like, purposefully, like, did a crime because his sister was gonna go be sent down because what had happened was you're only supposed to have one kid on the space station, and his mama ended up having two, and, like, so his little sister had to be, like, hidden underneath the floorboards uh, for, like, 16 years, like, her whole life, like, 16 years of her life, which is crazy already, so, yeah, so I think he purposely went down because she was going down. And he wanted to look after her. Fine, cool. 
makes sense in a way still crazy but makes sense I would have broken my sister out but whatever but then like the sister like the first thing she wants to do is like find a guy to hook up with it's like it like literally makes no sense of like how like flirtatious and how boy driven she is and it's like the stereotypical teenage boy driven like I don't I don't know it was just it, it didn't make sense to me. It was very annoying because number one is like you lived underneath the floorboards your entire life. Now, I know with the teenage hormones, you be, you know, feeling certain things. But like at the same time, that wouldn't be like my first like off the jump, off the plane or off the ship. Like, let me go find a man. So that was really annoying. And it was just the whole setup, like literally, uh-uh. <laughs> Like, you're going to, like, roll your eyes a million times during, like, the first half of the season or two-thirds of the season. But then what happened, let me see. Hold on. I got my notes. Okay. But then it gets interesting because they find out that, like, there's, like, literally people who survived the nuclear attacks and all that stuff that are, like, why are y'all on our land like that? Like, that's mad disrespectful. Y'all, like, like wilding out for what? And, like, you're a threat. So, like, we got to, like, go and, like, do you in, right? <laughs> so that was what was interesting because it was a whole war with that. I didn't like the racism, like, metaphor that they were having because they called those people grounders. And, like, they, like, had such disdain towards them and, like, already had beef with them. Even though, like, like you know, like, I think the grounders, quote, unquote, attacked first. But, like, it's just the way it, it seemed very much the story of the inception of America. And I just didn't like that because it's just, like, you know, y'all y'all supposed to be better than that. You know, so I didn't like that part. <laughs> but anyway, so that kind of got interesting. Then eventually, because they, they like, kidnapped one of the, or abducted one of the quote-unquote grounders. Um, and, like, they were torturing him, but then Octavia was like, nah. Like, torturing him for information. And Octavia was like, nah. Like, that's not cool. And so she was, like, really kind to him. And, like, giving him water and stuff like that. And trying to, like, convince the other people. Because Bellamy thought he was, like, king of the jungle. It was really weird. <laughs> like, he was in charge of everything, which that was an eye roll as well like he was so power hungry which was weird because like he went down there to go save his sister so then why then all of a sudden you want to be like the leader of everything uh, anyway eventually octavia like falls in love with him uh with the guy that they kidnapped his name is lincoln and like she really took on to the culture of the grounders because the grounders had like a completely new culture which is you know over a hundred something years you would expect that right and so that was pretty cool I liked that part and then like their love story was really nice they eventually killed him which was really annoying because I loved Lincoln he was the only one who had some common sense and their love story was really nice but like it was just so it was so much it was so much I didn't like Clark the main character I didn't like her she annoyed me um it, it was given very much the chosen one and you didn't know why like, they didn't explain why. Um, do I like pumpkin? No. Do I respect pumpkin? No. You know, like, okay, for example, like, with Captain America, like, during the movie, like, you see how good of a person he is. Like, he cares about other people. Like, he seems like a decent guy. Like, he's very dedicated, motivated. You know, wants a greater good for everybody. And so, like, you can see why they'd be like, all right, yeah, you're the one, get super serum, whatever. And, like, he's, like, the one to be the leader and look up to and blah, 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 blah. But, like, literally with Clark, she just seems like she whines all the time. She seems a little patronizing and a little, like, I know better and you don't. And it was a little weird. I didn't like it. And then also what had happened was the president of the space colony, the United States space colony, his son ended up getting locked up for something. Like all their like offenses, like literally didn't make any sense. But anyway, <laughs> he got locked up for something. And literally like the second episode, they killed him off. And then the way that they treated his like murder, he was murdered by like a nine year old. It was so weird. And like, she just had like a murderous rampage. It made no sense. I am so confused. 
It made no sense. She just decided to do it. But, like, they just didn't seem that upset about it to me. And there, you know how, like, in TV shows, they have, like, a mourning scene when, like, you know, you reminisce about the character. You say what was good about them. And you say you miss them. Like, there was, like, literally, like, no mourning scene for his character. I can't even, I don't even know what his name is. Like, that's how bad it is. And you would think for, like, being the president's son that, like, you, like, like, there would be more. There would be more. I thought he would play just a bigger character overall in the show, especially when they like alluded to him like low key having feelings for Clark because like they grew up together. Um, because his the, her Clark's parents were also like in the politics, the political, you know, landscape of the space colony. So like they grew up together. So like it like seemed like like he had a crush on her. So I thought that that was gonna like be a bigger storyline, but no, they like, just like killed him. <laughs> like second episode with the nine year old. So that was weird. I didn't like that. But I do gotta say, like, I think it was like episode eight or nine of the season. It was like late into the season. I'm sorry for the hissing. My laptop is hissing and uh, because I'm doing this voiceover and like it's doing a lot. It's being dramatic. But anyway, um, but like towards like the end of the like last few episodes of the season, it actually starts to get good. It actually starts to make sense. So I was saying that if you're really interested like you have to suffer through the majority of the first season in order to get to something good because season like two and three and I think like half of four were really really good like me and my mom like she ended up getting into it because I was just watching it for myself but then like she would make comments (laughs) from like her side of the house (laughs) like from the kitchen because you can see the tv from the kitchen and then her office desk is not that far away from the living room, too. So you can, like, hear it. Um, so, like, she would make her comments as she does. <laughs> and so she got into it, too. And so, like, it actually started to get good to the point that, like, we watched, like, two to three episodes every day. Um, because it was just that good and that intriguing. Like, the storylines themselves are really interesting. It's just the acting, it's just the the justification of what characters do and why it's just like the characterization of the characters in general is just off it's so off but i do have to say like eventually this is all spoilers i'm sorry i didn't put that warning but there is all spoilers you're not gonna get nothing but i'm like talking about it like so like unorganized (laughs) that i i don't think it even matters But anyway, (laughs) this is so jumbled. I wrote all these notes just to just ramble about it. But anyway, so eventually they get to the point that the president eventually comes down. I think it's like season three. Um, He comes down and um, he finds out his son is dead. He's all depressed. Then like this AI robot like takes him over. And then there's this whole like city of light thing that like this robot wants to consume in everybody's like consciousness to live in this artificial city of light place where everything is like, it's like a utopia. Like everything's great. Everything is, you know, easy. And like, it was just so annoying. It it was like meant to seem like a cult, but it was just, I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't like that storyline, but like, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff. Like the, the original 100, like go to war, go to bat, and you know with like all these other groups of people that ended up surviving the uh you know nuclear war toxicity of the planet um that those storylines are interesting to me um but like i said just like it's hard for me to not like the main character and still watch the show um but i did i watched it for seven seasons because eventually they have to leave to another planet and that's when i stopped (laughs) I was like, this is too much. And then, and then eventually Clark and Bellamy um, ended up like romantically getting together. And I was like over it. Cause it was so out of the blue, but like there, I looked it up and like, I believe they're married in real life as, you know, like as they're themselves as real people. So I think that's probably why they like wrote it in, but it was just, it was so out of the blue. And I always wanted like Clark and Bellamy to just be like platonic because, you know, guys and, and girls can have platonic relationships like that's a thing so and like Clark literally (laughs) she's been with so many people throughout this season that it gets a little confusing because first she was with one dude he ended up dying like everybody dies in the show (laughs) 
<laughs> there's a lot of death. So if you don't like a lot of like killing, there's a lot of that. So um yeah, they like everybody ends up getting it eventually. But she was with this guy that she ended up like hanging and liking even though I knew he wasn't shit like the moment he stepped onto screen like I didn't like him at all so it ended up that eventually he had a whole girlfriend this whole time meanwhile he's coming up with Clark on the planet and like it just yeah it got messy and the thing is what was funny is that his girlfriend is an engineer right and like she was like I love my man like I have to go down there and, like, see if he's okay. I have to be with him. Blah, 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 blah. So, it's like, she, like, MacGyvers this space shuttle along with Clark's mom. Because Clark's mom also wants to go down there and see if her daughter's okay. She ends up not going because some shit goes down. Because, obviously, it was, like, an underground mission. Like, no one else is supposed to go down to the Earth unless they know it's, like, absolutely safe. Um, and so, she ends up staying. But the girlfriend, Raven is her name. She ends up going and she finds out the whole bid and it's like, it's super drama. It's super drama. So that's number one. Um, I, I actually really liked Raven because like she was usually the solution for a lot of stuff. Like she was a really great engineer. Like she was usually the one that had the most sense <laughs> out of the whole group and like she can like get the shit done. So I really liked her. And then... Clark then ends up being with the queen of the grounders to Alicia, who is the same one from the Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, I think her name is also Alicia. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I think her government name is Alicia. So anyway, she ends up being with her for a hot minute, which I actually wanted because like, I don't know, I, I was feeling the vibes. I was feeling the sparks. So I like that. But that was short lived. I think it was like two, three episodes. Maybe a little bit more, but not much. And then they killed off Alicia. And I was so mad. I was so mad. Because I was feeling the whole storyline. Clark damn near was going to live in the, the queendom with Alicia. And it was just, it was nice. It was nice. And then they killed her off. And then they think Clark did it because Clark was in the room and nobody else was because she like Alicia accidentally got shot by somebody. And it's a whole big thing. It's just it's so much happens in the show. So much happens in the show. So it's it's if you want a chaotic mess, this is the show to <laughs> go with. This is a show to um, watch. However, because I was doing my notes and um oh I do want to say before I go into that is that I also really liked two other characters I'm gonna figure out how to <laughs> organize this a little bit more hold on I really liked Murphy's character he is a murderer <laughs> but then like they changed his persona like you couldn't stand him season one but season two you liked him better uh because he was more of like the comedic relief and, like, he was more pessimistic, but, you know, still wanted to do what he needed to do to survive. And it was a little bit better. Um, and then he ends up being, like, kind of like Robin Hood with another girlfriend that he has eventually. And that was cool. Um, so, Murphy was pretty cool season two. Season one, you can't stand him. You want him to go. But season two is pretty great. And then I did like Octavia as well. Because she ends up being like the queen of everybody because the earth is about to go through like another apocalyptic event <laughs> and which another thing a mess like they just they made up way too much stuff they made up they made up way too much stuff it was just getting messy so anyway um yeah so the earth was going through another apocalyptic event and what had happened was um octavia ended up being the queen i forgot how but, like, she helped everybody, like, survive. But, like, she was low-key, like, a dark queen. Because they had to do some shit. I won't say it here. So, I can leave the surprise for y'all. But she had to do some shit in order for everybody to survive. And they were fine. Because I think they had to be in the bunker. They lived in a bunker for, like, five years. They were fine when they were in the bunker. But the moment that they had access to more food, all of a sudden, Octavia was the evil one octavia was the horrible queen octavia can't do ah, ah ah like she was all of a sudden the enemy and like the evil boogie woman and like i did not like that that's when i started to not like the show 
because Octavia number one was a badass queen. She was, I would have been like her. And like, she had to do what she had to do to survive for everybody. And they were grateful when they were in the bunker. But the moment that they were out of the bunker, it was a problem. And I didn't like that either. So it was just so much. It was just, it was just so much. And there's just, the story has so many twists and turns. So like I said, if you like a chaotic teenage dystopian mess, this is the one for you. Yeah, so that's that. So I had to suffer through that in order to get through this corset because this corset took a lot <laughs> to do. As you can tell, I'm still outlining. I'm now doing the in internal outline um, for the little circle things that the monarch butterfly has. Um, but yeah, so it's I needed something that had a whole bunch of seasons in order to pass the time because I need something because I love music, but it can't always be music for me. Uh, so like stories are better. I might try audiobooks, but um, I like stories better. I like TV shows better. So yeah, that's that. That's the 100. I can go into so much more stuff, but uh, <laughs> I, I decided to stop ranting about it because I've been ranting about it for a half an hour. So moving on, the next thing I watched to finish up the butterfly corset was space force i loved it is on netflix but space force is on netflix the one that stars steve carell in it and it's literally a spoof about the actual space force <laughs> um it's i love it it's so good especially after like episode one because i had to get over the hump of like getting used to the vibe of what space force is and so space force is literally this um air force general commander i.e steve, steve carell um he ends up being allocated and moved to be the head of the space force which is actually an actual like government military branch now in case y'all didn't know somebody created it and i won't say who but you can fill in the blank it came up and was created recently but yeah so like we that's like an actual thing and so I think in light of it like um Steve Carell or the creators were like let's like totally make a spoof of it so it's about Steve Carell getting used to his job being the head of the space force people undermining him people not knowing what the task of the space force is or like the goal of the space force is um, and then also solving like different crises that go on and stuff like that. But like the ensemble cast is actually really good. I like every character. I literally like every character, which was good. Um, the jokes, it's dry. It's dry jokes like The Office. It's pretty much like if The Office was Space Force, but like 2020 humor on top of like it not being like a repeat of the office like if you watch the office in the space force you won't feel like it's the same thing or like redundant um it's like not but it has that type of humor and flavor that's really good i'm peeling off <laughs> the um stencil now because i outlined everything and i'm peeling it off at a rate or a place where the rhinestones are dried enough, like the glue of the rhinestones are dried enough, but not too dry to stick the stencil onto the paper. So I would say like, wait, like 30 minutes to an hour. And if like not sooner than that, like you'll see, depending on what glue you use. Of course, I was using E6000 Fabri-Fuse, but peel off the stencil relatively soon. Like I said, the, the rhinestone should be secure enough to um, not move but still loose enough that you can peel off the paper. So now what I'm doing is once everything is filled in, I mean, once everything is outlined, I'm now filling in those gaps, except for like inside the circles with the same hot pink Aris rhinestones. Oh, okay. So what happened was, okay. <laughs> so before we get into that, excuse my belly and this weird angle. But um, before I filled in everything, I am applying my chandelier crystals. Yes, they're actually chandelier crystals. So what I have is um, light pink octagon beads and hot pink octagon, uh, hot pink or fuchsia octagon beads um, that I got. 
I think what I think your crystal dream store I'll link it down below but these are the two colors that I'm working with and so now what I'm doing is sewing them with invisible thread into the places where I want them to go so at that little tip of the monarch butterfly wing and then a couple of those like circles as well I think I already sewed some beads on as well because I also have Swarovski beads that I used yeah I think they're already sewn in I don't think I filmed that sorry y'all but yeah I have some Swarovski beads in there as well before Swarovski was like um we don't sell to small crafters no more so um yeah and I just did that I don't know that horse is looking mighty suspicious yeah it's gonna wake up yeah, kind of like every time a, a main character falls into the water, plunges to their death, they're right. always alive. Right, they are. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, I was about to say, the horse was like, get up, bitch, we got work to do. <laughs> Sleeping on a job like that. Listen, I clock out at five. <laughs> Like the acting was great. They had great actors in there and people you might recognize. Great storylines. Like each episode they were like solving like an issue, which was pretty funny. Um, and it's very well produced. Like it doesn't look like cheap or anything like that. Like it's actually really, really good. I think the only gripe that I have with it is that there was a love story um, between Dr. Chan and Angela. I don't know why I have to say Dr. Chan. They re refer to him as Dr. Chan throughout most of the series. But Chan and Angela, like, they, like, were starting to build a storyline. But then when they finally, like, got together, like, she just was completely uninterested in him. And, like, was ghosting him. And, like, it, it's, like, to have all of that build up to then it lead to nothing was, was a little hurtful. It was a little hurtful, especially like there was like no romance in the show because Steve Crow's wife ends up getting like locked up. So there was like no romance. <laughs> That's the thing is like there was no romance. You don't have to have romance, but if you're going to like introduce it, then back out of it. That was kind of rough. I, I was I was kind of upset. But yeah, I just do that uh, for both sides so that they're as equal as possible. Um, I, the only thing I switched from the invisible thread to regular thread because the invisible thread is a little sharp and I was sewing into the lining, which wasn't a good idea, but Hey, it is what it is. So, um, I switched from that, but I, if I like, I wish there was a softer invisible thread cause that would be perfect. But anyway, I do that real quick before I fill everything in because I didn't want the corset to be too hard. Um, to then sew the crystals on because that would have been way harder to do the grip would have been off because you know the rhinestones make a bumpy surface and um, also like the glue makes it hard as well so um, yeah so that's that but anyway moving back on but uh, yeah but other than that I love the show um, it's a good laugh it's clean humor like it's just it's good it's good so that was what I used to finish the corset um, with was Space Force. It only has two seasons. It was canceled, which I was really mad about, which that's a whole other thing. I got beef with Netflix because like I got HBO Max and like HBO Max is like loyal to their shows, like to like shows that don't get a whole bunch of hoopla, like Stranger Things hoopla or Game of Thrones hoopla still get renewed for at least a second season. You know, like they at least get renewed for a second season. So, um, with Netflix, like they really kind of introduce a lot of shows and then cancel them. And then so it doesn't create that loyalty to like go back because you know your favorite shows are there. And like, I feel like they don't cancel like the shows that need to be canceled, like some BS reality shows i.e. Hype House. <laughs> I think it is canceled, but like the fact that they even thought it was a good idea to even have is questionable to me so you know it just seems like they're throwing everything to a wall and see what sticks but it's like not working it's not working it's not working not everything can be stranger things okay not everything could be um what's the other one shit i know people love umbrella academy i couldn't stand it i don't know it was weird because that love story that that was weird and y'all know which one i'm talking about if you watched umbrella academy i didn't like it 
I don't, like, I don't care if they're not like genetically related. That was weird. <laughs> So anyway, moving on to the next show. Um, okay, so actually not show, movie. I just recently saw Spider-Man No Way Home because I like to wait for things to be rentable or on their streaming platforms. Because I'm really trying to make sure that I stay safe until the whole thing is over or at least safe enough that, you know, I can do what I need to do and not be afraid of catching nothing. So, like, stuff like the movies, like, I don't have to go out to the movies and see stuff. So, I did rent Spider-Man No Way Home. Finally saw it for my mama. Um, what the fuck is that? Oh, that's a sticker. <laughs> I need to talk to him today. Oh, my God, what is that? Oh, my God. What is that? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, I thought I saw a bug on my closet door and it was about to freak me out because um, I'm getting used to not being in the city city and like all these weird bugs like popping up out of nowhere thinking it's their house. So anyway, um, so I finally saw Spider-Man No Way Home. I have a lot of thoughts. So we'll start with the positive. I love the characters. I saw all three movies like one like one a day over the weekend because I was going to take my mom out to see the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness season I mean season <laughs> the, the second movie um just for Mother's Day because that's a special occasion and so we were preparing to do that we ended up not doing it um because we have to reschedule but I was planning to do that because Doctor Strange is her favorite Avenger she loves it like she this is the whole concept of Doctor Strange like like literally her favorite is her and Scarlet Witch so you can see a theme here anyway moving back on to um Spider-Man No Way Home so the positives um also I loved seeing the actual different Spider-Mans from the different movies Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is my childhood Spider-Man and I will always stand by that I will oh, like there's no there's nobody else for me like literally I subconsciously was such a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man fan that I rebuked Andrew Garfield Spider-Man I just I was like I'm not watching it no it's too soon it's too soon there's not enough time in between Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man so like I didn't watch none of his movies I think it was a one or two I think it was two but anyway i don't watch none of his movies and then i literally watched tom holland's spider-man movies only because it links to dr strange's multiverse of madness so i was like well if we're gonna see no way home then we might as well see the other two like that's how dedicated i was subconsciously i was like toby mcguire spider-man is is my only spider-man and that's what i only accept now i do gotta say that Tom Holland Spider-Man is pretty good. I haven't seen Andrew Garfield's yet. Um, his accent is really cute. Um, it's not like super New York, especially super Queens, but it's enough that it's believable. Um, but what I didn't like in the first movie real quick is that Spider-Man complained about it not being enough crime in Queens. And I gasp. <laughs> in New York City, there is always crime. Like, literally every second of every day, there's always crime. In Queens, for the most part, unless you're, like, in, like, the ritzy places of Queens. And even that, like, there's always crime in Queens. So, you're not gonna run out of it. You're just not. You're just not a good superhero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but, like, th there's always something going on in Queens. Uh, no, mm-mm. Mm -mm, I didn't like that. So that was ridiculous for me <laughs> as, as a New Yorker myself. That was like, all right, Spider-Man. Now I could see if like coming back from fighting Thanos that he was like, th you know, like the petty crimes and stuff like that was boring to him. That would have made more sense. But for it to be like no crime in Queens was ridiculous. But anyway, going back to the movie review. Um, I love the way that they had the different Spider-Mans playing off of each other. I love that Tobey Maguire was like the, like the older Spider-Man that was kind of more calm and relaxed and kind of like the bigger brother. I loved how Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was more like the middle kid that was like, you know, kind of old, but still kind of young and still kind of figuring it out. 
Um, and I love Tom, you know, kind of, you know, being the young Spider-Man and kind of learning from the other two Spider-Mans and their experiences. Uh, I just, I loved it. I loved how they play off of each other. I love that it was giving very much sibling vibes. Um, I love how they had a piece of wisdom for each other. Um, and I love the joke because when mom and I were watching um, the the new Tom Holland Spider-Mans, we were confused. We were like, wait, he got a web shooter? Like, make that make sense. Because the Spider-Man we know can shoot the webs out his wrist. Like, no problem. That's the whole point of being bit by a spider. Just as I thought. Trash. That's like literally the number one power you're supposed to have. So I was very confused. Um, so I loved how they joked about that in the movie too. Of like the differences. And I loved how they had their original uniforms in the movie as well. That was pretty cool. I literally could have watched a whole movie about them just like hanging out together. Like the chemistry between them and, and the way that they played off of each other. And the jokes that they made about their different universes was really, really, really cool. Um, and I loved it. Of course, I always love MJ and Nate you know Nate is always a comic relief for me I love the tidbit about him being able to like wield the Doctor Strange's little ring thingy <laughs> but I love that so much like I was obsessed with that that like he had like the lineage to like actually like be able to do it without like any training whatsoever like I thought that was super dope and then I love MJ like always like I just loved like her character and how she was always like the awkward spooky pessimistic like type of person and I loved how like she used her like investigative like smarts to figure out that like Tom Holland or Peter was Spider-Man like I loved all of it like I love I just love her personality in general because I think it's different it's very different from the other two love interests for Spider-Man like the original Mary Jane and Gwen from um, Andrews like because they're always like you know the super you know like um societal pretty beauty standard but like still smart because they worked at the newspaper place right <laughs> I did not do my research I was just wanting to ramble today but yeah so like you know but like they were kind of more typical love interests but like MJ is not as typical and I just I love it so much oh one second um now I'm starting to fill in the center like the little circles now with the light rhinestones the Aaliyah rhinestones instead of filling in the other stuff okay <laughs> that's that anyway but going back to it and I also love that she's never like really helpless in the movies like she always figures out how to take care of herself especially in this movie Spider-Man No Way Home like she was definitely like I can handle it I can run I can figure this shit out like I love that um and speaking of I love that all like the villains from the different movies were in the movie like that's the whole point right but like William Dafoe as the Green Goblin it's just masterful he plays that part so well like it's literally ridiculous like I think for me he stacks up against I I'm gonna say it but Heath Ledger's Joker I I think they stack up I'm gonna say it I said it with my chest nobody can fight me on it beware of me because I'm not backing down I'm sorry nope mm -mm. I love him as the Green Goblin and he's the only person that can probably play Green Goblin like that but I do gotta say you know Green Goblin like he stank he's just real stank like he didn't have to roll over Auntie May like that like why he roll over Auntie May like like that was just extra and like unnecessary like that was just being mean at this point like he didn't have to do her like that and so I was really mad even though like every Spider-Man like they even pointed out in the movie like has like a trauma uh, of losing somebody but like that was rude <laughs> like that mm, that was mean so yeah uh Auntie May she didn't deserve it but I do gotta say is that the fact that they had all them villains in that apartment in that small ass condo and thinking that nothing would go wrong when they still haven't fixed them yet was suspect to me that was very stupid i'm sorry because the soup kitchen and superhero i mean super villain you know lab all altered motherfuckers are different it's di those are different people those are different people you know like they got all the tech 
and the superpowers to like really mess you up. Like the soup kitchen people just want their food. It's different. You have to save them differently, Auntie May. You got to save them differently. You can't approach them the same way. And so I was kind of mad about that. I was like, that's dumb. And it wasn't even their condo. It was Happy's condo too. So they brought all these people in to Happy's condo and he didn't know about it. That was rude. And the fact that like the whole premise was for Spider-Man to like heal the villains instead of like just, you know, trying to send them back was a little weird to me. Only because like... I get no no I don't I don't get it only because like the thing is is like but they're still evil though this is not how you play the game like they're still they still have the tendency to be evil whether you heal them or not like it's an active choice in my opinion like when do villains just need to be healed make it make sense I'm confused so I didn't like that because I'm like, they're just evil. Like, they're literally just evil. So the fact that, like, they healed them, quote unquote, and that it worked, quote unquote, or at least to our knowledge, was a little weird to me. I didn't like that. That's suspicious. That's weird. I just, you know, because people, and I, I have experienced, people are just inherently evil. There's just some people out there that are just inherently evil. So why couldn't it be them? Why did all of them, you know, were able to be healed? Like, it didn't make sense. And also, for them to be healed doesn't mean that when they go back to their universe, they're still not going to die. Like, they were literally in the middle of a fight with Spider-Man, finna be, you know, sent somewhere else. So that, the, the storyline of No Way Home was the weakest to me. I liked, um, I liked, um, what you call it, Far From Home better storyline wise because the storyline was cool. It was like an ex, you know, Stark Industries employee that never got his, you know, you know, acclaim and, you know, Tony Stark was an asshole and all that. Like that made sense. So it was like pretty much to get revenge, blah, 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 blah. But, like, this didn't... The storyline was so weak. The action was great. They didn't overdo the action at all. Um, because, like, Marvel can sometimes can overdo and over-dramatize over the action too much. It's like, all right, that's enough. Like, you didn't have to go there. No, the Empire State Building didn't need to fall over Marvel. Like, you could have left that out. <laughs> that's just too much. It's too dram dr dramatic for me. But they didn't overdo the action this time. And you didn't really see, like, the Marvel formula that I've been seeing in a few of their, like, shows and movies. Like, you know, because you can kind of tell, like, oh, this is the setup. You know, this is the trauma or the grieving or the loss. This is the action one, preparing for battle, then action two, and then final battle royale. You know, you can kind of, like, tell that that's the formula. But in this movie, like, they switched it up a little bit that it wasn't as obvious. And I watched three Spider-Man movies back to back to back. So that really shows that they really did produce it and mix it up this time, which was really good. Um, so the action was great. It was just the storyline was just rough, bro. It was rough. Because the whole thing... Okay, first of all, I want to revoke Doctor Strange's wizard card, okay? Like, because the fact that he even did that spell... To make everybody forget who uh, that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. And then applied the changes that Peter Parker wanted to apply to the spell was ridiculous to me. I, I felt like that was malpractice. And I felt like that was stupid. <laughs> I really feel like like a true wizard that had true knowledge, like the, the ancient one, she wouldn't have done that spell. She would not. She would be like, boy, you better figure out how to live that life when people, everybody know that you Spider-Man and call it a day. I ain't fixing nothing for you because it's not going to fix. It's going to mess up the entire universe. She would have known. She would have known. So why, Sorcerer Supreme, did you do it? Make it make sense. So I felt like that was malpractice. Get Wong back because Wong wouldn't have done that spell either. Because that, that spell was stupid. <laughs> like And like from a teenager. And you know how teenagers freak out? Teenagers think they, that it's the end of the world whenever something doesn't go their way. Like, you know that. So why, Doctor Strange? Why? It would have been better if Nate was the one who did the spell. And him not knowing what he was doing then broke the whole multiverse, blah, 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 blah. Like, if they would have showed their cards early about, like, Nate, like, having the powers, 
of the wizards and stuff like that. But I think that would have been a way better storyline that would have made a whole bunch more sense than Doctor Strange doing it to me. So I was mad about that. And on top of that, like, why did so many people believe that Spider-Man killed Mysterio? Like, that didn't make no sense. Because for me, like, I know, like, the, the film was a film. But, like, for me, it's just, like, that doesn't make sense. Spider-Man, like, defeated, like, this big-ass purple motherfucker that, like, wiped out half of, like, the universe's population. So why would he have the heart, especially for what Mysterio said he did it for, to then kill Mysterio? Make, make it make sense to me. Like, and, like, deliberately for, like, evil intentions. You know what I mean? Like, that didn't make sense. So, I don't think as many people would have believed that um, Spider-Man did it. And they and that they probably would have wanted more information about what happened. Another thing is, like, why don't you just wait until, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. cleans it up? Like, just because Nick Fury is off-planet doesn't mean that other people in S.H.I.E.L.D don't know about Spider-Man and the deal with Spider-Man and blah, 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 blah. Like, Phil Coulson, before he went to go do his own thing, like, he knew about all the Avengers and shit like that. So, like, I just don't understand, like, why couldn't Spider-Man wait until, like, everything got cleared up? So, like, I would have waited for that. Like, community college is not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. You do it for one year, and then you transfer, like, Spider-Man, you could have waited. So, like, all of that was just, like, rash decisions. Like, Nate and MJ didn't even know about it. So, it's not like they were, like, complaining about it. And then they were like, oh, let's go do the spell. Like, nah. Like, it was just, it was a mess for me. It was a mess for me. And then especially, like, for other people to feel like Spider-Man killed Mysterio was, like, against everything else that, like, he literally did. So, obviously, something's fishy. Now, if they had the storyline of it being radicalized, you know, on Facebook, <laughs> of, like, all these conspiracy theories, and that to the point that it became, like, prominent in the popular media, that would have been something different. And also, I feel like that was mad disrespectful that Mysterio, like, just blew up Peter Parker like that. Like, he didn't have to do all that. Like, I know he's spiteful, but, like, damn... <laughs> like that's rude he's literally still just a teenager like that was disrespectful that was uncalled for and I'm also mad that eventually um MJ and Nate had to forget who Peter Parker was as a person and like that was not cool like if Peter would have left the spell as is he would just have to tell Nate and MJ that he's Peter Parker and then that's it but no now now they completely forgot who the hell he was and it's heartbreaking. It's it's bad. Because the scene when he walked into the donut shop and the look on his face when he saw MJ and Nate, they, yo, that broke me. That was rough. That was rough. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. That's pretty much it for that. The graphics were pretty good. Um, the the I love the relationship between Happy and Aunt May. I think that was hilarious and that it was like a summer fling for Aunt May and like Happy was completely in love. That was, I loved it. Um, loved the touch of Daredevil being Spider-Man's lawyer, but like Spider-Man couldn't even wait for Daredevil to like do his shit. He went to Doctor Strange instead. Like make it make sense. Like you spent money to hire a lawyer to then, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I also like the storyline of Spider-Man having to hunt down the different villains from the different multiverses and like bring them back to like, you know, the, the wizard lair. <laughs> um, I think that added a nice like investigative touch to it and it not be all like all out action, whatever, whatever stuff like that. So yeah, that's my overall opinion for the most part. Oh, I think the last thing with, um, Spider-Man trusting the villains to just walk freely around Happy's condo. Um, it's just that Spider-Man and Aunt May were way too trusting to be motherfuckers from Queens. I'm sorry. They were way too trusting. Okay. But overall, I love the movie. I would rewatch the movie. Um, I think really purely because of the whole Spider-Man trinity. I think that was just really cool. And it was just like everybody's dream. Yeah, I overall like the movie. If you haven't watched the movie, I would recommend it. Um, it's six dollars to rent on Netflix right now. Um, twenty dollars to buy. So, um, so anyway, moving on to the next uh show slash movie. Let me go see. I'm gonna briefly touch on Top Boy because I didn't write any notes, 
but I freaking love the show. I love, if you like The Wire, The Sopranos, Sons of Anarchy, like any of that, The Mayans, yo, go watch Top Boy, because it's just that but British, and it's so good. It's, it's so good. It's, the cinematography is beautiful. They have beautiful black people. Like, no one told me that they had fine-ass black men in this show. Because I heard the buzz about it, but I didn't hear about that. So, I <laughs> I had to watch it. And, you know, it, it was nice. It was nice to look at. So, like, you know. Oh, I'm placing A.B. Rhinestones in that little circle. And I think I do that for another one as well. Um, I'll link those down below. There's so many things I did. And this project... <laughs> It's been done for a couple of months and I still haven't done the photo shoot for it and I really need to. I really, I just haven't been in the mood. So those are white AB rhinestones that I'm putting in there as well. So like I said, I'll just link them all down below. Like it was just so good. The storylines are good. They do kind of like plop you in the middle of like what's going on. So you kind of have to take a moment to figure out what they're talking about, especially with their thick ass accents. <laughs> But, um, yeah, they kind of, and I don't know if they, like, plop you into it only because they have a, a, a previous series, Summer House. And then I think they also read, like, they did Top Boy before. Like, there's, like, a Summer House Top Boy, and, they, and I think there's a older Top Boy. And then I think this is either a remake or it's an extension of. So I don't know if that's part of it. Um, but it's, just, it's really good. You know, obviously, like, the crime, the dealing... But, like, the drama, because what I love about Top Boy is, like, they have the drama that you want, but they also humanize a lot of the people, like, in the show, and you see, like, why they gotta do it for it. Like, Jamie, who is also my baby daddy, <laughs> um, like, he had to go into it because their parents passed away, like, months between each other when he was 18 and so he was like yo I gotta take care of my brothers so like that's why he had to go into you know that that life um you got oh, fuck 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 Sully so, yo Sully crazy ass Sully if you know you know oh you got Sully who like fell into the life but is also like kind of trying to take care of his daughter and prove that he is something but also like you can tell with Sully and with um the shame is that they just that's all they knew that's like all they knew and you know you see like the shame having to do with his mother and then like eventually falling in love with um the woman who takes care of his mother and like it's just the way that they do it it's just so masterful it's like we like me and my mom couldn't stop watching it like we had to watch it like once a day now there is a lot of killing there is a lot of you know <laughs> violence so if you can't take that, then I suggest not watching it. But the way that they do it, like the storylines and the backstabs and betrayals and the hierarchies and the, the rules and the codes, like all of it, it's just, it's really cool. It's really cool. And, you know, it's just nice to see just like, you know, a whole bunch of chocolate people just doing some supreme acting and acting their asses off and it just being such a well-produced show. And, like, it's just, you know, like, for me, it, like, deserves Emmys or whatever is the British or international version of that. It deserves all of it because it's just well done. It's well done. So, I love Top Boy. There's going to be a third season and that will be its final season for the Netflix version of it. I probably will watch Summer House after the, the last season of this Top Boy. Um, just to see what that's about. So I can probably get some more context of what, what the hell went down. But um, yeah, but it's pretty, it's really cool. It's really cool. So I can't recommend it enough if you're into all of that type of shows. So anyway, moving on to more superhero stuff. Um, the Batman. Yeah. <laughs> that movie is one of the best movies I've seen in a very long time. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to say that anybody can fight me. I don't care. Um, it is literally one of the best movies I've ever seen in a really long time. And that's hard to say because there are a lot of great movies out there, but there's also a lot of trash movies out there. So, so it's a, like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a high ranking movie for me. It's yeah, because aesthetically 
Gotham City and the way that they did that is just it it puts you in an entirely different world that you kind of want to be in. It's really cool. It I lo- I I freaking love it. I know like people were nervous about Robert Pattinson being Batman. Don't. He does the crap out of the role. Uh, his accent is pretty good. Like the fight scenes are believable. Like the the tortured like you know traumatized kid thing that batman has going on it's just like there there's a lot of i watch the shows with a lot of trauma i'm so sorry (laughs) oh my god that's something i have to sit with and contemplate but anyway um but yeah like just that whole vibe like he is the closest club closest closest bruce wayne i have seen to my favorite version of bruce wayne which is in the justice league animated series he's the closest one to that you know barely says any words you know straight to the point like not sentimental task oriented you know kind of like it's almost in his own world that like he is the law but also above the law because his morality is better than the cops that's what he believes in so like just all of it like it's just this is the closest to me to the animated justice league series i i just i yeah (laughs) it was really good the storyline was good it was more the crime solving type of one of like trying to figure out you know who the riddler is and what he's doing and what his objective is and solving all these crimes and murders and all that stuff it was so good. I love what they did with the Riddler. Now, if people who love classic Batman might not like the Riddler because he's completely different. There's like barely any question marks to be found. Um, but he's very different from what you expect. He plays more of a um, jigsaw meets shit. Hold on. Come on, Riddler. But like Jigsaw, but like if he was like a psychomaniac that laughs at his own shit. (laughs) Like, it's just like, he reminds me of another character. And I can't, I can't remember for the life of me what that character was. But like, he's psycho crazy. Like, live streams it. Lives in his own fantasy. Has these like sick twisted ways that people are going to get got. Like, and like, he's, Yeah. He's just off the rails, and I love it. I love how psychotic they made the Riddler. Because, I mean, the Riddler kind of has to be crazy. <laughs> kind of has to be crazy to be doing what he's doing with riddles. Like, come on. Come on. You kind of you have to go there. Um, they don't go into the Riddler's backstory too much other than him being an orphan. Um, and, like, having to, like, live that life of struggle. Um, but other than that, like, they don't really go into too much of, like, how he became the Riddler and all that stuff. Um, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Now, I do have to put a disclaimer. I am the number one, not number one, but I'm a very, very, very huge fan of Catwoman. I saw Holly Berry's Catwoman probably over 20 times as a child. I know, (laughs) but like literally so much. I was Catwoman about three, four years in a row for Halloween. But what was funny, because like, obviously I can't wear Catwoman's costume (laughs) as a seven year old. So I like wore my dance leotard and some black tights, like black dance leotard, black tights and a cape. And she never wore a cape. She literally never wore a cape. My mom was like, here's a cape and like black boots and like, you know, like boots, boots, like rain boots. Um, and like literally that was my Catwoman costume. So I am obsessed with Catwoman. I know a Catwoman, which I will let y'all know in a different video, but yeah. So like the, the role of Catwoman is very important to me. And I have to say, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman is good. She's good. She's good. She's not Michelle Pfeiffer. She's not Eartha Kitt. She's not what um, Anne Hathaway. But she's not any of those. Like she really made the part her own, and it was a nice touch of her like unapologetic sensuality in the way of like she does what she wants and she's not afraid to do it, and also that 
she knows she's fine and she knows that she can get what she wants um, and that she goes after what she wants. But also the intelligence and the crime fighting that she has. She could, Her fighting was believable as well. Um, and also kind of like the lone wolf kind of thing or lone cat <laughs> but, but um kind of like that loner vibe of like I can only take care of myself because nobody can do it for me um so I really like that and, and that like go getting ambitious attitude of like I gotta do what I gotta do just the only thing was that I don't know now that I think about it she should have stole something somewhere she should have stole something because you know she always stealing stuff she always like, you know, I'm gonna still like make my buck on the side though. Like, yeah, like I'm fighting evil, but like I also gotta pay rent. So like I wish she like stole something in the movie. Like she could have stole something from a few different places. Um, so that's the only thing I'm missing, but that's more the writers than Zoe's like performance. I believed her, I loved her. Um, I just I, I think she was great. I think she was great. Like, I want a movie. With Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Like, that's how much I really enjoyed her performance. Yeah, and I love the chemistry be- between her and Robert as well, or Batman and Catwoman. Like, it was believable to me. Uh, and then it was, I loved how they made Batman not know what to do <laughs> with it. He didn't know what to do. He's like all been all work, no play. So I love the slight awkwardness on Batman's side of like, oh, she's coming on to me. And I don't know what how I'm supposed to feel about it. But this feels nice. So I think it's OK. Like, I just I love that. So um, the Penguin, he's in the movie. I love that they made him just like a traditional mobster. And that the Penguin was more of like his like street name than like him like actually resembling like just an ugly penguin (laughs) like i love that he was just a traditional super italian mobster like i i loved it um you know and i guess because part of it reminds me of home (laughs) but like i just i love that because i just never really liked the the one with michelle pfeiffer in it is that michael keaton hold on the one from the 90s I never liked that penguin. I, I just, mm. because I feel like a lot of Batman's characters can be a little bit caricature and they really made this movie a lot more darker and realistic. So I loved what they did with the characters to make them more believable um, because it was definitely needed because it wasn't, yeah, because for me, that's not my type of style. Like I want the characters, especially the villains to seem as real as possible. So, um, it was really, really cool that they did that with the Penguin and that the Penguin wasn't the prime villain of the show and that he was kind of more of a great character. Like, you knew he was doing some, like, illegal shit, but he was actually a little bit helpful, um, in this movie this time. And there's a really cool, like, car chase scene that should win an Oscar (laughs) if the Oscars are still alive next year. Um, but yeah, but it was pretty, it, it was good. It was just good. Um, Jim Gordon, the actor that plays Jim Gordon, he's like really cool too. Like I liked the the way he approached the role as well and that it was a partnership with Batman and that they had like a knowingness, but not too much. Like, you know, that they just started acting or just started working with each other recently, um, which was really cool. The thing is, I really liked the storyline. It didn't bore me. It was a three hour long movie. It did not bore me one bit. It was very intriguing and, and engaging because the only other Batman movie that didn't put me to sleep, like literally put me to sleep, is The Dark Knight because of Heath Ledger's Joker. Because that shit, you couldn't wait for him to come on screen. You couldn't wait because you knew he was going to make you laugh, but also be scared scared and and like almost stressed out (laughs) because you don't know what the fuck he's gonna do so like I love that um so yeah so that's the only other Batman movie but this movie even more so really um engaged me a lot it was like very much murder mystery very much whodunit and why and it was a little chaotic but in a place it was like slightly chaotic but I liked it um and how they deal with the underground scene you know, especially with certain types of workers, um, was tasteful. They didn't overexploit anything or like shotgun you to the face of any, you know, traumatic things or, you know, violent things. Like it really wasn't too much other than the actual like murders themselves. But it wasn't any like violence against women to the point like they talked about it. 
Uh, and it's mentioned very briefly. They didn't sens sensationalize any pain with the underground scene at all. I liked that towards the end of the movie that Batman, he was so on vengeance and punishing the evil and the wrongdoers that towards the end of the movie, he came to the realization that he more so wants to help people than to punish the wicked. And I really like that. I really, really like that because that's really what it's all about is to make the world a better place for, for the good people. But yeah, um, and the love story was tasteful. It didn't like take over the whole movie, which I liked. It was just little like seconds of moments here and there, which was nice. And you can see the magnetism and the chemistry um, between Batman and Catwoman. Um, but it was almost like the beginning of something new. And I liked it. It was nice. Um, and I liked how they interweaved Catwoman's like storyline and humble beginnings <laughs> and like, you know, the reason why she does what she does without it also taking over the story. It almost seemed like a prequel to the Catwoman movie. Wink, wink. I hope, I hope, I really hope they do a, a Zoe Kravitz Catwoman movie. I really do. But it was nice um, as well. It's just, it really just kept you engaged. Some of the things I did not like. Um, I didn't like Alfred. I didn't like the person who did Alfred. I didn't. <laughs> he was not old enough for me. Because I'm like, this man is supposed to be able to take care of, of Batman. He's like 10 years older. Make it make sense. So I didn't like that. Um, mm, it just, it wasn't hitting it for me. Even his accent, like I always pictured Alfred having a more like posh British accent. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> but uh, like, kind of like, um whatchamacallit, Vision from Marvel. Like, I, I kind of pictured more like that. That was more my fantasy. And then New Yorker complaint as well. Oh, Lord. Again. A fucking again. So the Riddler's last hurrah was to blow up the dam in lower Manhattan so that Manhattan pretty much floods. But it'll probably only be like, a third of Manhattan, not all of it. <laughs> no, me knowing my geography. Um, and so, yeah, that was the whole thing. So it's like a whole attack on the city. So I don't know why they thought this was okay. <laughs> but like literally when people were like running for their lives, they stopped them at 34th Street in front of Madison Square Garden and ushered them into Madison Square Garden for quote unquote shelter. Now, people who know New York, especially Manhattan, know that that is the dumbest idea you have ever heard in your entire life. First of all, 34th Street is not far enough to outrun the water of the dams. Second of all, Madison Square Garden is not stable enough as an architecture to keep out the water. It's just not. It's going to flood it's going to be a hazard. Like, that made no sense. Like, the best thing you can do is at least make it to Lincoln Center because that you should pretty much be out of the water, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, by getting that far, which Lincoln Center, if you don't know, is 66th Street. So, but the farther north you go, the better chances you have of not being attacked by the water, the flood. So that was so dumb. And then another thing is that Madison Square Garden does not have enough space to house everybody that's going to pass 34th Street. So that will already be a safety hazard in of itself. It just made no, it made no sense that the police would stop you to usher you into 34th Street. Now, if people got the bright idea to go into 34th Street thinking that they would be safe, then that's one thing because that's a lie. Um, but that's one thing because that's critical thinking for specific people, not me, but specific people. But the fact that they, the police stopped you to go take, sh no, <laughs> mm -mm. nope, no ma'am. And you saw nobody in the seats in Madison Square Garden too, when they were in there. So like the best thing you could do is be in the seats, like the high up seats, like everybody was on the floor. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I can go on about that. But um, the last thing for me that was the negative was just the Batcave, which is a little underwhelming because you expect the Batcave to be like decked out with technology and it wasn't quite like that because it was an abandoned um, train station 
that apparently the Wayne family built. Um, and it was like rusty dusty and it looked like it. <laughs> um, and it just seemed like a storage facility. Like it just seemed like like Batman like moved all his stuff in there, like never really organized it or put it like he never really like made it his own. It's just like everything was just plopped there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't like the Batcave or the Batmobile was a little I mean, if you want to make the Batmobile like realistic, it being like a decked out it seemed like a Mustang with like turbo, like a turbo thing in the back. Like, that's fine, but, like, you want it to, I, I, for me, I want it to be, like, an unrealistic, super turbo, whatever, whatever, decked out, like, Lamborghini, Lamborghini, Ferrari, with, like, bat wings on top, or whatever, like, that's what I want, but, you know, you win some, you lose some, but that's pretty much it, I, I want to own the movie on DVD, I will rewatch it over and over and over again until they make a second one, I still probably watch it like it was just that good to me uh I don't think it got enough hype as it should have um you know but I really like for me if I was Rotten Tomatoes I would give it a 94 and that's just me um but yeah so that's pretty much it for the Batman
And that's it. This is how the corset came out. It literally looks so freaking good. It looks better than I ever expected it to be. And <laughs> like, it's just, it's fabulous. So um, once this corset is done, then I can finally take my photo shoot and do the whole shebang. So I might do a get ready with me video for that as well. So I can get the photos together and all of that good stuff. So um, that is pretty much it for this video. If you would like more rhinestoning videos, please put them down in the comments down below. Um, let me know what you would like me to rhinestone as well and i'll try to do that as soon as possible and all of that good stuff so so i will link all of the rhinestones down below all the materials i use down below and also on my patreon i'll have more details about that so on my patreon you can sign up to be a member to get very very exclusive benefits and i have something cooking up very 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 soon but you'll get exclusive videos um exclusive patterns pattern drafting videos blog posts um, behind the scenes look and so much more so if you'd like to sign up the link will also be in the description box and in the pinned comments down below so if you have not already please subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so you get notified whenever i do post and yeah that's pretty much it also as you see here this is another corset that i'm currently working on another really really big project um that's coming to y'all real 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 soon so stay tuned for that and there's even more reason to turn on those post notifications so um that's pretty much it for this video and as always lovelies please love yourself and i will see you next video Mwah.